And hey guys, what's up? I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to the channel where we talk about anything related to comic books. If you are a Spider-Man fan like me, you are probably disappointed with all the mediocre content we're getting lately. Well, I've got news for ya. We just got a brand new Spider-Man title that seems to be the exception to all this stuff. So join me in my review of the first issue of the new Ultimate Spider-Man. This new title is called Ultimate Spider-Man, but it's not a continuation of the original series. Let me explain. In the recent Ultimate Invasion miniseries, we witnessed the creation of a whole new universe, Earth 6160, orchestrated by the Maker and evil Reed Richards from Earth 1610. The Maker prevented almost every hero from ever existing, either by killing them, locking them up, or preventing them from gaining powers. That's why Peter Parker never gained powers and never became a superhero. However, many years later, Tony Stark discovered and stopped all of the Maker's plans and decided to bring back all the lost heroes. But the tricky thing is that Peter is 35 and actually has a family now. He is married to Mary Jane and is the father of a boy and a girl, Richard and May, named after his father and his aunt respectively. In this universe, Ben never died, but May wasn't so lucky as she was one of the victims of the Maker's Council's attacks in New York that killed thousands. Surprisingly, Ben works in the Daily Bugle and seems to be besties with JJJ, who seems to be way cooler now and a lot closer to Peter. And now there may be some mild spoilers for those who haven't read it yet. In the first issue, we also briefly see Wilson Fisk and the Green Goblin, and I believe they are both going to have an important role in the story moving forward. After being introduced to all the characters in the series, we learn that Tony Stark gave Peter the spider that could turn him into Spider-Man as it was supposed to happen 20 years before that. After a lot of thought and after getting advice from Ben and MJ, Peter decided to let the spider bite him and as a result, a new hero was born. I have to be honest, I was kinda hesitant with Hickman as the writer because he didn't handle Ultimate Invasion very well, but man, this was superior to everything I've read in years. Like, the only bad thing I found in this story is the fact that it's not actually set in the main Marvel Universe. So be aware, I won't be talking about negatives because it just doesn't have any. Hickman's writing makes you want to keep reading and reading, and even though it's kinda long, it's such an amazing story that 20 minutes of reading feel like 5. And when I was done reading, I was just shocked by how good this was. And now I want more. Hickman does a great job introducing the main characters while also establishing Wilson Fisk, aka the Kingpin, as one of the villains. And something nice is that they managed to recap the events that led to the creation of the Ultimate Universe in a different way than they usually recap stuff. You usually have to learn what happened previously through some large text or a few pages dedicated to that purpose, but in this story, we get to see what happened through the eyes of each character and how everyone reacts to it. In general, I really like the more emotional approach of the story, and I think that the grief after the events of Ultimate Invasion could not have been depicted in a better way. And even though you'd expect more action in a superhero comic, I'm glad they kept this more grounded because we got to see a day in the life of Peter Parker without interruptions caused by Spider-Man. Plus, it's a relief to finally see him have the normal life that he's deprived of in the main universe. And by focusing more on Peter Parker, we get to see its character in his life individually and how Peter interacts with all of them. Something else I found wonderful in this story is the pacing, which always worries me in alternate universe stories. They usually rush everything and introduce new characters too soon so as to catch up with the main universe. Thankfully this wasn't a problem here as they are clearly taking their time. And I don't mean it in a bad way, because it's not progressing slowly, it just progresses in a way that is beneficial to the story. Because a more comprehensive insight on Peter's life without Spider-Man is much needed. And you'll probably wonder, how the heck is a Spider-Man story without Spider-Man that good? Well, who said there's no Spider-Man? Every single part of Spider-Man's personality is there. The guilt, the doubts, the way he thinks he's not good enough, but most importantly, his love for his family and his will to help others. And let's not forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, not the opposite. Last but not least, this is one of the most original Spider-Man origin stories I've ever read. 
In most alternate universes, we see other events leading to Peter's transformation or other ways in which he's transformed, but this is the first time he isn't even transformed, just saying there will be some mild spoilers, so you might want to skip this part. This time, the spider bite never happens, because the maker prevents it so Peter never becomes Spider-Man, or at least until Tony Stark sends him from the future, the spider that can change him, in order to restore things to as they were supposed to be. May's death instead of Ben's is also something I found really interesting. All these are kinda different than the usual, huh? Hickman has brought so many fresh ideas and I think it's imperative that Marvel lets him cook. I don't think I need to say much about the art, because you can see for yourself how great it looks. Marco Chiacchetto, best known for his work in Daredevil, brings new life to the character, well, literally. Marco Chiacchetto as the penciler and Matthew Wilson as the colorist were the best artists they could have chosen for this job. Chiacchetto's art is so detailed, but without too much realism, because let's not forget it's a comic and we want to see something different than reality. And in general, it just feels so mature. Wilson also does an amazing job coloring by using a unique combination of lighter with darker or warm with cool colors. All these give a more serious yet joyful tone to the story, which I think is perfect for an older Peter Parker since he's more mature now, but we can't forget it's Spider-Man we're talking about, a character whose jokes and positivity through hard times are a crucial part of his personality. So I don't wanna judge too early, since this is only the first issue, but remember my words when I'm telling you that this series is going to be the best of 2024 and possibly become one of the best of all time. It's a must read and a 10 out of 10 for me. Well guys, this was my review of the first issue of the Ultimate Spider-Man series. I really can't wait to read the rest of it. And please tell me in the comments what you think and if you're excited for the next issues. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button, subscribe, and why not allow all notifications. And if you want the complete Spider-Than experience, you could as well follow me on Instagram. Well, until the next time, goodbye true believers!